Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 17th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. Last night around 10 p.m. I saw a Facebook post that auroras were starting to be visible, so Kim and I went across the road onto the bluff to look out over the lake and we were able to see the aurora with an iPhone photo, it turned out pretty good. With the naked eye, you couldn't really see too much, just kind of a pale band on the horizon where you see the green there, but always cool to see the northern lights. I was also playing around a bit with the thermal monocular, and the one cool thing was that there were bats that were swooping down low over the lake, presumably catching insects. And there were also two fox kits that were playing down below that I really enjoyed watching, and the thermal monocular has different modes to represent what you're seeing. This is the red hot mode. You can also display it as white hot or black hot or fusion, which shows things in shades of purple. And keep in mind that the thermal monocular does not need any light at all to see. The weather was very unsettled this morning. Kim and I got out early and there was an early thunderstorm that passed off to our north out over the lake. Here is one of several green herons that flew over and gave us a nice look. When it was time to do the hawk watch, it had really cleared out and we had a period of sunny skies and southerly winds, so we did get a bit of a flight there in the morning before it clouded over again. Here we have a flyover warbler. We see a grayish head, overall plain underneath with a little bit of yellow, and we see a yellow tail base and a dark black tip. This is a female type American red start. Sometimes we call them yellow starts. Here we have another warbler where we have a black cap, a white cheek, and some black streaking down the sides. This is a black pole warbler. I've really enjoyed seeing and hearing this species lately. This is a small turn that's gray underneath and we see a long tail. This is a common turn. Here we have a small compact buteo with pointed wingtips and just a little bit of brown streaking underneath and a banded tail. This is a juvenile broad-winged hawk. I tried to get a selfie with Reggie, but he closed his eyes and stuck out his tongue. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings, so it's a small falcon. Overall, it's a light color underneath, so this is an American kestrel. And we can see some orange tail feathers indicating that this is a male. However, this is one of the alternate tail patterns. Normally, we see only the outermost tail feather on each side has the banding like this, and the rest have the orange with the black tip. But some American kestrels, such as this one, have additional banded tail feathers. So it's something to keep an eye out for and something that's interesting to note. Here we have some large dark water birds that were soaring around. These are double crested cormorants and some of these are immature. They're the ones that have the more silvery upper breast and neck. Here we have a very high bird and we see long trailing legs and a neck that must be curved into an S because it doesn't stick out that much. This is a great blue heron that was flying at extremely high altitude ahead of a thunderstorm that was rolling in. And actually not that long before this, there was rain moving in so we were kind of putting our stuff away so it wouldn't all get soaked when the downpour actually hit. And I looked up and there was a big push of raptors, which was kind of a surprise because we hadn't really been seeing anything in those cloudy skies. But there was a huge group of turkey vultures, a very tight group of more than 100 turkey vultures. And then following them was this big line of a couple hundred broad winged hawks. And in the madness of trying to count them all, I wasn't able to get any photos, but it was really impressive to see that many hawks riding ahead of the thunderstorm moving in. As that storm was approaching, we were mingling about looking for any last minute raptors and ready to bail as soon as that rain started to move in. After that storm, it started to clear up and we had a little bit of a gap with a few final raptors before another storm moved in and shut the count down for the day. But we did have a few final birds. Here we have a northern harrier that migrated through. And here we have a breeding plumage common loon that migrated over low, heading north out over the lake. For the morning and hawk watch, we ended up with 94 species for the north lookout. Just before sunset, the sun popped out for a few minutes, so Kim and I decided to go and ski in the lake for 15 minutes and see what was around, and we ended up finding two American white pelicans sitting on Lake Ontario. 
which were the first of season for Kim. I had seen the ones that we had a week ago from the South Lookout, but those were very distant views of three American white pelicans in flight, so it was nice to have these two just sitting on the water giving a nice scope view. And as we were watching the pelicans, we even had a nice rainbow appear. And here's Kim watching the pelicans out on the lake. In addition to the American white pelicans, we also picked up some common nighthawks at dusk and a few other species, bringing us to a total of 97 species for the day from the North Lookout. I had one new species for the season today, which was Canada warbler, bringing us to a total of 197 species for the season. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrating raptor totals, today we had 149 turkey vultures, 2 ospreys, 7 bald eagles, 3 northern harriers, 8 sharp-shinned hawks. We had 248 broad-winged hawks, 1 kestrel, and 1 merlin for a total of 419 migrating raptors. That brings the May total to 9,563 and the season total to 87,821. All week we had nice, favorable conditions overnight for songbird migration, and most days we were having southerly winds for the hawk watch. However, the next couple days that weather is going to turn. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, they're calling for rain early than cloudy with showers, a high only in the mid-50s, and westerly winds at 15 to 25 miles per hour. So it's a fairly strong westerly wind, so that may be enough to get some birds up despite the rain. I would think maybe turkey vultures will move. It's hard to say if conditions will be good enough for broad wings to move. And with those westerly winds, that could be either lookout. We'll probably start at the north lookout and assess the situation and move to the south lookout if we have to. But I would only expect light, maybe moderate migration, but maybe we'll be surprised. Braddock Bay has had a good number of turkey vultures recently, and if they're ready to move on those west winds, we could get a good number of turkey vultures. For Monday, they're calling for a mix of sun and clouds and a high only around 50. Winds northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, so we'll be down at the south lookout, and that's a pretty unfavorable wind overall, so expect light migration. And for Tuesday, intervals of clouds and sun with a high in the mid-50s. Winds north-northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Again, we'll be down at the south lookout. Expect light migration. All right, another great day out at Derby Hill, a day of twists and turns and changing weather and some really nice birds. Looks like the weather will be unfavorable for a couple days, but it's still May. You never know what could happen. So maybe we'll see you out soon at Derby Hill. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.